Hello all you wonderful, awesome people out there. I'm Sadie Weldon, and I'm going to bring another message I felt like the Lord laid on my heart. So let's pray before I get started. Father, we give you glory. We give you praise. We magnify your name. Thank you, Lord, that you reveal things. It's the ultimate treasure hunt in your word. And as we search these things out, we find that treasure in the mystery. So I pray over everyone at the sound of my voice that you give them ears to hear what you're trying to tell us. In the name of Yeshua. Okay, so the title of my message is uh, Silver Shoots Up as Sheba Rises to Judge. The Lord puts these things together. My uh, thoughts start rolling through my head. I go dive in the scripture and the Lord brings it about. So I create images to help all of us get an idea of what he's saying. So let's look at the unjust scales. We know that we've been living in a world with unjust scales. It's everywhere. Everywhere you turn, this is not just. This is not just. This is not just. Just from our local towns of them price gouging um, the taxes, price gouging the water. It's insane. It's insane. My son, who has a small house uh, in town, there was two um, pear trees in the front yard. He cut down the pear trees because they were overtaking everything. The city came by and raised his taxes. Now that's not right. That's unjust. This is what I'm talking about. At every turn, the scales are unjust and the Lord's had enough of it. That's why I put the image of silver scales with the hammer of judgment and the money, which is the fake money. It's been unjust for a long time. This is some of the things God is going to set us free about, and we need to pray into it that the word of the Lord that he gave me about he was going to make the crooked way straight. I'm going to go there right now and tell you all that because you need to hear the word of the Lord and what he did. So um, as I'm waking in those moments, that's when the Lord will really speak, really flash things. He was yelling in my ear, I am making the crooked way straight. I am making the crooked straight way straight. I am making the crooked way straight. He got louder and louder and louder. And he went on to say, um, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and in the natural. So what you think is natural is not natural. As I am awake, I grab my iPad and I start typing what the Lord said. In the middle of that sentence, the, a, a word I did not know, had never seen, pops up in big, bold letters, spurious. So I was writing what the Lord's word, words were. I am making the crooked way straight. Those spurious things, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and in the natural. I had to look up spurious. It means it is not genuine, it's not authentic, and it's not of God. And I'm like, God, that is deep. That is wide. And how do you wrap your head around that? Now, that was back in 2016. Right before he took me to Israel the first time. That was a miracle. So I am on the bus. And we enter Jerusalem for the first, my first experience into Jerusalem. And I'm just like, oh, wow, this is amazing. The whole, the whole thing is amazing. But the Holy Spirit speaks to me and says, Sadie, I want you to give that spurious word. And I'm like, oh, um, God, I am a guest on this trip. I have no authority. But if you want me to give that word, you're going to have to give opportunity. He did. So we get to the temple steps, what's left of them. I sprint to the top. And I turn around and I'm overlooking Jerusalem, God's capital city of the world, his city. And I see a vision of the golden um, New Jerusalem coming down. It was glorious. And then I see Jim Garlow at the bottom of the steps and he's gathering people. And I'm like, well, I'm going to toodaloo down there and see what Jim's doing. As I walk up behind Jim, these are the words that came out of his mouth. If anyone has a word from God, you need to give it. 
Oh my gracious, God wanted that word spoken in 2016 on the temple steps overlooking Jerusalem. I cannot make this up. He's making the crooked way straight spiritually, mentally, emotionally, in the natural that are not genuine, authentic, or of God. That's huge. That's amazing. That's fantastic. So in other words, all these unjust scales all these lies, and it's like, hats off, God. I don't know anything. I give you permission to rewire my brain, my heart, my thinking. You can teach me the new truth. Amen? I wanted to share that before we kept going. I didn't know I was going to share that, but I felt like the Holy Spirit wanted me to share that again for those of you who have never heard that word. So, let's look at Proverbs 11.1, 1, and this is what it says. Dishonest scales are an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. He's bringing us that just weight in every system you can possibly imagine. We are headed to a whole new world. And then we're going to look at um, Proverbs 20.10. Diverse weights and diverse measures, they are both alike an abomination to the Lord. He hates it. He's had enough of it. That's why he's bringing us justice. That's why he's bringing us freedom. Now let's look at just the opposite. Another 111 here. We have Deuteronomy 111, and it reads, May the Lord God of your fathers make you a thousand times more numerous than you are and bless you as he has promised you. He's the promise keeper. He will not fail us. He will come through. There are too many of God's children on individual basis who've been screaming the same thing in the way God gave it to them. We agree. We agree with the God of heaven, and it's coming to pass. It will not be stopped because God's word cannot be stopped. So I wanted to also share this. Okay, let's talk about the silver and the gold because... Um, God has a treasury. King Solomon had a treasury. Where'd all that go? Silver was almost like, I mean, that was just an everyday common thing. There was so much of it. Where did all that go? God knows. And it's about to be dispersed for us. So let's, let's just look at Ezra 6.5. Also let the gold and the silver articles of the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar, the Babylonian king took to the temple, took from the temple. Now we're God's house now. Listen, which is in Jerusalem and brought to Babylon. Babylon has stolen what belongs to us. He restored, be restored. It says be restored and taken back to the temple, which is in Jerusalem, each to its place and deposit them in the house of God. This is a promise for you and I. This is a promise to you and I from God. What once was will be again. That's the word of God. Now, I want to talk about not to fear the cleansing. Because um, it's so important to understand a lot that's going on is us being cleansed and our lands being cleansed. It's, it's a must. It must take place. So, um, I was in prayer one day and I had an open vision and what it was, was like an upside down tornado vortex that came down over me like this. And I was postured in prayer, humbled before the Lord. Well, I could feel the presence of the Lord Jesus in there with me, but he was pulling out all these lies. He was pulling out all these unclean thoughts, all unclean things out of me. He was cleansing me in this storm. Hmm. We've been in a storm, y'all. The storm's not over. But those of us who have humbled ourselves before the Lord, and we are allowing him to cleanse all this in us, he's preparing us to handle the glory and to handle the wealth and to handle repairing the streets to dwell in and the breaches that have been made. That's what's been going on. Now, we are about to see a cleansing of the land that we have 
never experienced. It's all encompassed. It's all together. But we had to get cleansed up to get prepared for this. So let's talk about the purification and the cleansing. This is Psalms 12, 6 through 7. The words of the Lord are pure, like silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. You shall keep them, O Lord. You shall preserve them from this generation forever. He's been purifying us. Wave upon wave, those of us who would allow the Lord to cleanse us and purify us. It's still happening now. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Now let's look at Psalm 66, 10 through 12. For you, O God, have tested us. You have refined us as silver as refined. Okay? It hadn't felt good. It hadn't felt good. But it's going to be glorious. You brought us into the net. You laid affliction on our backs. You have caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water. But you brought us out to rich fulfillment. Glory to God, yes, he has, and he is. And Isaiah 48, 10, behold, you have, I have refined you. Here it is interesting, but not as silver. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. He's been testing our hearts. He's been testing us to purify us so we could know where our heart is. Are we going to be like that? God, I give you permission to rewire my brain. I give you permission. I don't know nothing, but I'm going to let you feel me full of truth. And I'm going to let go of all of these lies passed down to me from generation to generation, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and in the natural. Hmm. Are you willing to humble yourself and let that happen? Now let's look at Proverbs 25, 1 through 5. These also are Proverbs of Solomon, which the man of Hezekiah, king of Judah, copied. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but it's the glory of kings to search out a matter. As the heavens, see, people talk about that a lot, but they didn't keep reading. As the heavens for height and the earth for depth, so the heart of kings is unsearchable. Take away the dross from the silver, this cleansing, get it out, and it will go to the silversmith for jewelry. Are we not called his precious jewels? Take away the wicked from before the king, and his throne will be established in righteousness. They have to be removed. They have to be removed before us. Who are we? We are kings and priests in this earth to the Lord our God. <laughs> That's what the word says. Praise the Lord. Now let's look at 2 Timothy 2.21. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We praise you for this. We're not going to fear the cleansing. We're going to allow you to do it in us and in our land, and we're not going to be afraid. Now let's talk about Sheba. So I thought this was very interesting how the Lord intertwined all this. Let's look what happened. This is Jesus speaking. This is Matthew 12, 42 through 43. And here's what he said. The queen of the south, he's referring to the queen of Sheba, will rise up in judgment with this generation and condemn it. For she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And indeed, a greater than Solomon is here. Yeshua, of course. Then an unclean spirit goes out of a man he goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. Now, this is very interesting because this judgment is rising up. This cleansing has to take place. But he said the queen of Sheba would rise up in judgment with this generation to condemn it. So, prophetically, it's like as silver rises, and it's going to rise in the natural, but as we rise as that silver. The Queen of Sheba rises up to judge. Therefore, the two are connected, the silver and the gold and the Sheba, the prophetic Sheba coin. This is how the Lord was tying this together. 
because we don't have a Queen of Sheba in the earth today, right? But God has been showing his kids mysteries, which is craziness, you know? And the natural mind cannot receive these things. And I'm like, okay, God, okay. We shall watch and see what the Lord our God will do as silver shoots up. Queen of Sheba rises up in judgment. The ultimate is the king of kings has risen up to judge. He has said that. He has said that over and over again. If you didn't hear the 80 decrees that the Lord gave me, there are, I didn't even realize that there's three or four of those decrees he gave me about him going to act now. He has risen up to judge the nations. You should go back and let the Lord talk to you and agree with those 80 decrees the Lord gave me. It's fantastic. Every time I go back in and I make those decrees again, I get more excited, more excited, and my faith just goes to a whole new level because they're here. his decrees, not mine. I was just a willing vessel that every day he gave me a new one. And I searched the scriptures to back up what he said to prove it was the Lord and not me making it up. Y'all are so blessed. God has a wonderful, wonderful ride in store for us. And, you know, this is God's divine flip. Because, truly, everything the main enemy meant for harm, God meant for good. You try to take God away from people, he's going to make sure you get him. <laughs> it don't work. It don't work. What's happened is it's, it has set the world up for the billion so harvest. The enemy is an idiot. I'm sorry. He's an idiot. I'm not sorry. He's an idiot. He, he, he still thinks he can outperform God. I'm ready for him to get real slapped in the face before us all. Hey, if any of you, um, I've talked about the gold and silver company that the Lord laid before me. If any of you want to know about that, um, listen, I've never seen anything like it. It is your own private wallet and a secure vault so you can get out of the banks, which we need to get out of the banks and become the bankers. I've never seen anything like this company. If you want more information about that, I can send it to you. I can explain it to you. And um, God's a good God, and he knows how to bring things before us in a timely manner. So y'all rejoice in the Lord your God. He has great, great things in store for us. You're blessed in Jesus' name.